In today's episode, I'm going to show you the heart of tuning an engine. We are going to change the timing of the cylinder and we are even modifying the exhaust port. On the reference engine, we found the exhaust port to open up at 92 degrees after the top dead center and the transfer ducts opened up at 115 degrees after the top dead center. So the hot burned gases had 23 degrees of time to leave the barrel. In relation to a whole engine revolution uh, of 360 degrees, these 23 degrees are only a part of 6%. And if we take the engine speed into account, let's say at 6000 RPMs, one revolution of the engine takes one hundredth of a second and 6% of this revolution are only 6 microseconds, which are as short as 6 thousandths of a second. These 6 microseconds from when the exhaust port opens until the transfer ports open too are called the blowdown period and it is essential, you will see. Maybe you have wondered why some old Piaggio engines that you are tearing apart after a long life of hard duty are covered all over with brown carbonized skin inside the crankcase and underneath the piston. The reason is that in the moment that the transfers open, the pressure in the barrel is still so high that the fresh gases underneath the piston, they cannot move up the transfers. In fact, the opposite is happening and the hot burned gases go down the transfers into the crankcase. The problem is here that the blowdown period is just too short to decrease the cylinder pressure sufficiently. What I want to tell you is the blowdown period is the bottleneck of your two-stroke Vespa engine. It is the orifice. The first creative step of the tuner's work is to choose a blowdown period value that is reasonable in relation to the power output targets. To give you some orientation, um, 30 degrees of blowdown are a very nice value and uh, 35 degrees, this is only desirable if you don't have to care about noise emission and fuel consumption and so forth. Adding the virtually extended blowdown period of let's say 30 degrees to the recent transfer port timing of the engine, which was 130 degrees, gives the exhaust port duration. So in this case, 190 degrees. This engine is supposed to be a touring engine. So on the lower end of the, of the road tuning. And as I told you before, um, the 130 by 190 degrees uh, timing combination is already uh, a high timing um, and almost close to a, to a race setup. We don't need the whole 30 degrees of blowdown, maybe we can go back for 28 degrees. And also the transfer pot timing, which was 130 degrees, we can go back about two or four degrees, I suppose. Now the question is how to physically lower the transfer ports and how can we reduce the transfer port timing? The answer is easy because we used these uh, stroker crankshaft inside the engine here. It has a long con rod. I had to add this um, six millimeter base gasket spacer and we can now easily swap that spacer. Let's try to reduce it by one millimeter. We can use a five millimeter one. 
we lowered the transfer port duration by reducing the thickness of the base gasket by about one millimeter. I wanted to measure 126 degrees, but to lift the transfer ports by only one degrees, I don't know how it should be possible. So I'm happy with this value. We can go on and do the next step, which is um, checking of how far or how close the piston comes to the cylinder head gasket surface. The piston is about 1.8 millimeters below the ceiling surface for the cylinder head. I'm taking the almost the same measurement of the intrusion of the squish area of the cylinder head, which is um, 135 millimeters. So the recent squish gap would be um, 0.45 millimeters. So I'm already knowing if I want to have a squish gap of around 1.5 millimeters, I will need a head gasket of one millimeter thickness. And this makes sense because if I reduced the cylinder height on the base gasket for around one millimeter, I have to add this millimeter to the head gasket. If we have the degree disc very exactly to the zero degree value to the top dead center, then we can easily adjust the piston position to the value we want to have the exhaust port open. I take the caliper and measure the height, 35.25 millimeters. I'm marking the same with the pen inside the cylinder, which makes it easy for me to later on open up the exhaust port up to this um, marked line. With the piston already opening the, the exhaust port, we can mark the right and the left wall of the exhaust port. You see um, these two marks, which are in the same width as the exhaust port is. 40.5, so it's almost 41 millimeters. There is a rule stating that the cordal width of the exhaust port duct or the exhaust port window should be not more than 68% of the bore diameter of the cylinder. The cylinder we have here has 62 millimeters of diameter we can make the exhaust port wider by around two millimeters. So one millimeter on each side. The next step is to mark the new position of the side walls to the cylinder. You already see the boundaries of the modified exhaust port. The first thing I'm going to do is to cut away the, the exhaust flange and replace it with this SIP Performance Tuning Flange. This steel flange piece has at least three advantages. First, if I remove this, this final tube, uh, then I have much better access. The second reason for this uh, tuning flange is that it's much better resistive against wear. Because if you have a look at the exhaust um, flange here, the aluminum is already eroded after only one year of driving. And the last advantage, I think, is um, the stronger material uh, makes it possible to reduce the wall thickness. So with keeping the outer diameter, the inner diameter can be bigger. As you can see, I did not mark the whole uh, circle with the red marker, so I don't want to remove the step on the bottom and the step on the top of the duct. It looks like a restriction, but somehow it is told that these um, steps are giving an extra kick or acceleration to the gases whenever they come back with the pressure wave reflected in the 
baffle cone or in the muffler. Now then we could actually start to mill a new shape in the aluminium. My recommendation is to start with the lateral sides of the duct. The center I will make um, in the moment that the side walls are ready because the center wall which is the, the top edge of the duct is the critical one it's defining our timing and if I exceed the timing <laughs> the cylinder is, is ruined. Another important thing is to make the top edge of the exhaust pot to make it round because if, the pit, if, it's, if, if it's straight and the piston ring comes up, um, it's just crashing into that st straight edge. But if it's round, then it's um, um, softly pushed back inside the slot of the piston and then it moves easily over that edge. Now the rough part of the porting work is done. Um, I raised the, the top edge of the exhaust port window and laterally I widened the duct a little bit on the whole length and I gave it the cheeks I mentioned before. Um, then I already went to the engine and checked if the, if the porting result is now uh, the timing that we desired and it said that we are now at 179 degrees of exhaust pot timing so they are still missing uh, two or three degrees uh, until we reached uh, our targets. This is actually very cool so I can easily do the finishing of the surface and I think it will still remove some material and we will get these two or three degrees that we are missing. The top edge of the port window is now rounded as I like it and I also smoothened the surface with uh, more fine um, sandpaper. So from my point of view the porting job is done. I have one last advice for you. It is concerning especially the P200 engine type with uh, weird <laughs> stud bolts uh, pattern. If you're gonna make the duct wider on the P200 engine or even if you give it cheeks then you will soon break through the walls and uh, you, will, you will see the inside of these stud holes, stud bores. But don't panic, it's no problem. You can make a bigger hole here and just apply an o-ring which is sealing the cylinder with the stud bolt and then you don't have any problems. Now this episode of the tutorial season is at the end. If you have any comments or advices or questions or ideas for future tutorials, please feel free to write them down in the comments. Thank you very much again for your attention. See you next time. Goodbye.